Live from our studios somewhere in cyberspace, it's Beats and Eats, a happy hour for your mind. The virtual lounge is open, so come inside, grab a stool and your drink of choice. Can I get an amen? And now, here are your hosts, Ty Ray and Nick Gelso. Thank you, bartender Scott Mitchell, Ty Ray, Nick Gelso with you on Beats and Eats Labor Day edition. We debated whether or not to do a show tonight, but you know what? We could think of no better way to end the holiday weekend than by doing a show open in the lounge. We're talking music, movies, pop culture, you name it. It's Beats and Eats. If you want to get involved in the conversation, give us a call tonight at 347 215 77 Seven one three four seven two one five seven 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 one, or join us on Facebook at Beats and Eats, and then on Twitter we're at Beat the letter N and Eats. And what a show tonight! Very excited. I'm kind of a geek when it comes to '80s rock and roll, and we have got a rock and roll legend for you tonight. Mr. Eddie Money is going to be on Beats and Eats, and we all know the music of. Mr. Eddie Money. You know this one, Nick? I do. How could you not? Love this song, Take Me Home Tonight. Really kind of a comeback song for Eddie in the 80s. He was away for a while, and this song went top 10 with Ronnie Spector. Eddie, of course, Nick, 30 million albums, five decades in rock and roll, and he's played with some of the greatest rock bands in history. Not only are we going to be talking rock music with Mr. Eddie Money, we'll also be talking with Movies Unlimited movie critic Herb Slifkin. We'll be talking about the hits of the summer and the bombs of the summer. And there have been some serious bombs this summer. Also some great films, Nick. Some great films this summer. We talked about The Butler at length last show. I love The Conjuring. We talked about that on previous shows, too. So... With that, let me bring you in. I, Like I said, Nick, kind of a geek. I'm a child of the 80s and was glued to my couch and literally would sit for hours. And I'm serious when I say this. I would sit for hours on my couch and wait for videos from Eddie Money. Those, uh, those videos were shaken and think I'm in love off his No Control LP. It was about 1982. I, you know, I, I was uh, listening today on, on uh, Spotify and you forget how many great songs this guy had. I mean, in, in my childhood, in my youth, he was all over the radio. You you always, uh, there was always an Eddie Money song on. He was very well known. Tonight I had a mini cookout with my family. I mentioned it to my cousin who's my age. Holy, holy shit, Eddie Money. So, yeah, I mean, and, and my little cousin knew who he was too. So, uh, funny story, uh, I want to go back. It was my brother's senior year song in high school you know how you have a class oh yeah very cool i'll always remember that so yeah uh just a a, a, an icon great very successful artist and uh happy to have him with us tonight funny guy too very funny man if you've seen him on things like king of queens and that let's face it that geico commercial is a hoot and he's yeah. making fun of his probably iconic song in Two Tickets to Paradise. Everybody knows that song, and he's had, uh, I mean, he's had other songs, but that one, I think, spans the generations. And just a funny guy, and I have the utmost respect for rock and roll royalty, somebody that's been able to last as long as he has in the music business. Think about that, Nick. Five decades in music. So many people have come and gone. I think the guy's in his 60s. Okay, and it's literally pedal to the metal with him. 150, 175 shows a year still. That's incredible. There's got to be a passion for the music and what he does. And and he still draws a crowd. So why not? Yeah, he draws a crowd wherever he goes. And I think the key from what I read about Eddie is he does treat his fans like customers and he keeps them coming back for more. So there's no snubbing anybody that wants your autograph. He's more than willing to meet with them. And the last time that I talked with Eddie money was, I believe in 2007, 2008, I think it was spring of 2008. And he was playing not just one show this particular evening, but two shows. So he had a little, it's like, wow, really? Yeah. I mean, I'm not so sure I have that, uh, that kind of stamina, at my age, but it's it's uh, going to be a thrill to talk to him. I'd love to hear a lot of stories from him, especially about the infant days of MTV 
And now MTV is unrecognizable. I don't even watch it anymore. I don't either. I, I, yeah, I don't even know what channel it is on my, you know, like what number channel it is on DirecTV. I can't remember the last time I went to actually watch MTV. Isn't that funny? I mean, I think back to my days and my teens and even in my 20s. And MTV was such a huge part of my life, Nick. It really was. Sure. I always had it on. I had it on just like I would any other radio station in the morning when I would get up uh, in the morning. And I had it on when I'd go to bed at night sometimes listening to videos and putting the TV on the timer, you know, the sleep timer, and falling asleep with it. Now it's unrecognizable, and I don't even really watch VH1 anymore. Now, there is one cool channel. I for, yeah, I forgot about VH1. There is one cool channel, and it's VH1 Classic. And I don't know if you watch that at all. It has many of the musicians and acts that you like on there. A lot of classic Queen and Led Zeppelin and The Doors. Some just terrific music on there, including old concerts. Interviews, speaking, of, kind of speaking of, uh, and not to change the subject, but you know, we were looking for the top... 100 or whatever songs Rolling Stones had out uh, for uh, the Stones, the Rolling Stones, the band, correct? So uh, I, I stumbled across, across this now, 100 Greatest Guitarists. You know Brian May is listed at number 26? That That's a, that's a shame. It's 26. Like, I know we're getting off track here, but really? 26? 26. And, now, and, and ahead of him, well, even at, I mean... Go ahead. Say what you were going to say. And I'll, I'll well, just I was going to say it. that maybe Brian doesn't get the credit that he might deserve because Freddie was so overpowering and charismatic as a front man that Brian in some ways had to be in his shadow. You know, Brian's not like a flamboyant guitarist like, say, an Eddie Van Halen. not a guy at all. But, right, you know, exactly. like, but the thing about it is, is you, when you think of the an- anthem, anthem, every song of theirs had a guitar uh, lick, you know, a guitar solo, and, and the anthem the anthem type solos he's having to think we will rock you was played in every sports arena in the world i mean he's he's at in, number 26 in uh, the world you're right say that again in the world because also in america yeah you a day can't go by where you don't hear that song if you're right. watching sports on television or if you're at i don't care if it's a baseball game basketball game football game soccer whatever yeah soccer you're going to hear that so brian may down in the low 20s in the mid twenties and uh, in the top ten, I don't even agree with three quarters of this. But Pete Townsend is number ten. I, I mean, he he is kind of flamboyant. I could see why he'd be there. Sure. Uh, Pete Townsend, the Who, number nine, Dwayne Allman. Get the Allman brothers off my stereo. <laughs> Get them off my screen. You're not a rambling man, huh, Nick? Oh, no, man. Where does he go? Oh, how does he get there? Eddie Van Halen, number eight. I don't think that does him any justice no. either. Well, who I know we're getting rating? off track here. Uh, but Chuck Berry uh, at seven. I could see that for for, for what he's done. Um, you know, he's influential. B.B. King at number six. Sure. He obviously deserves to be there. Uh, it, it, Jeff Allman does not deserve to be there. Jeff Beck does not deserve to be there. Wow, I like Jeff Beck. Beck. I like Jeff Beck, but I don't think he deserves to be there. Keith Richards, he's the Stones. He's got to be there, but you want to talk about flamboyant frontman. I mean, Mick was right there right. with Freddie. And to be honest, I liked a lot of Keith Richards' old stuff. The new stuff from the Stones, I just don't think Keith chose his chops enough because at one time he was – he was really, really something, and I could hear his influence in the songs. And as they got older, I, I haven't been able to hear that. Now, maybe that has to do maybe with his skills diminishing a bit. I don't know. Is he is he not the author of majority of the songs? That's a good question. I'd have I to. I think he is. I have so credits. If that's true, let's let's give him credit there. I mean, uh, he definitely did satisfaction and gimme shelter. Let's give him credit there. Uh, uh, then it is Jimmy Page certainly deserves to be there in the top three. Clapton in the top number two definitely deserves to be there. This is the one that really pisses me off, and it might piss a lot of people off to to hear me say this. But Jimi Hendrix at one number one, I, I don't see it. Really, he's just so iconic, and I think when you think of Jimi Hendrix, you think of Woodstock, and I think that that is just ingrained in people's minds. And he was what left-handed. So was Paul McCartney. Yeah, true, true. I mean, I don't. I just don't. I, yes, he's iconic. His, I think he's kind of turned into a Kurt Cobain type character. You know, his his uh, his fame got hyped more when he died. But sure. when you think about what he's done over the 
you know, the past 50 years or, you know, you want to go back to Chuck Berry, I mean, the 60, 70 years, I just don't, I think Jimmy Page spans three, three, probably three or four single years, I almost said seasons, three or four years. So, you know, I, I, I don't see how Jimi Hendrix on the list, definitely number one, I don't see it. I think you're doing Clapton, Page, uh, you know, and uh, Keith and Brian May and and Pete Townsend and some of these other great guys, Chuck Berry, BB King, you're doing them a disservice. Uh, for in case Mad Dog's wondering, I don't even see Slash in the top twenty. No, which I think is a disappointment if that's the case. I, I don't yeah. have a list in front of me. He's is there not. is there anybody from corporate rock in there, like say a Neil Schoen from Journey? Yeah, I don't know. I don't see even a Richie Sambora, but I'm only in the top thirty right now. Oh, okay. Um, uh, ACDC, I wouldn't consider them. T- Tony Iommi, number 25. From Black Sabbath, sure. Come on, how is he 25? George Harrison, number 22. This is ridiculous. I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> You're getting myself. fired up. I'm getting really Eddie. annoyed. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just who they put before them. You know, right. like, I just, it's it, it's got to be the Reader's Choice Awards. I, I don't know. What list is this? Is This, this is the 100 the Greatest Guitarists. In Rolling Stone's history. Oh, the in Rolling Stone. So yeah. the Bible of rock and roll music, really. Well, yeah, and you want to talk that way. You know, bands like, I'd say probably Queen and and some of these more, I don't want to, I don't know how to how to describe it, but they always got bad re- reviews in magazines like this. They didn't like overproduced music, you know, and Queen could be very overproduced. No. <laughs> I, I love Queen, no. I, I'm with you, man. I, I love Queen. I love the theatrics. And never thought they got enough credit here in the States for the work that they they did. But overseas, different story, playing those huge venues. I got into a fight with a friend of mine at Trivia one night. He was going off on me because I said, Queen is, is as popular as James Taylor. Now, oh my talk God. about your crazy comparisons. James Taylor... Yeah, but and if you think on a worldwide audience, there's no no doubt Queen, I think, exceeds James Taylor. But much to his chagrin, Nick, much to his chagrin, I went to the I went to the the stats, and they were dead even when it came to album sales. Seriously, wow! James but I want and Queen. Wow, that, that's incredible. But I wonder, first of all, James Taylor was around in the '60s, wasn't Correct. he? Yeah. So that that weighs into that. This James Taylor has produced bands in the '90s, 2000s. Correct. Yeah, he produced albums, and he's played in front of audiences in the '60s and in the '90s and the 2000s. You got to think, Queen began in whatever year in the early '70s and ended in whatever year Freddie died, which was probably the early '90s. Was that '91, '92? I'd have to look that. I don't know. I'd have to look it up, but I would say yeah, somewhere in that range. And here's how I remember: is because Magic Johnson. Came right. out about having HIV. Right, right, right. I think the same year. It was right around the same time, and that is how I remember because here there was this flamboyant homosexual, and you thought, oh well, and you don't want to sound this way, but uh, misinformed at the time, you think, well, that's kind of to be expected at the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then within a short period of time, Magic has HIV, and it was like a total 180. You know. The ladies' man, the Magic Johnson. So right, and uh, and here it was right around Wayne's World too, if you remember correctly. Bohemian Rhapsody, you Bohemian bet. Bohemian Rhapsody came back, so you see Freddie in his flamboyant outfits, and I love Freddie. And then Magic, it was like a, a tidal wave. Someone at the age of you know fourteen, uh, probably a good education at that time. Oh sure, very you much know? so. And because in one minute you're saying the F word and not F U C K. And in the next minute, one of your basketball heroes has HIV. That's and right. Like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? What's so it was it? a good eye-opening thing. Magic and Freddie did a lot for AIDS awareness, I'd say. They did. And that, let, let's talk about that on a different show because that's uh, that's the topic all to itself. But you're so right about that. Almost more acceptable because Magic Johnson could speak out on it when you know poor Freddie Mercury was suffering, suffering from that, just w- wasting away. Just look at the old videos from that time. He's dying. Well, yeah. look at Rock Hudson. I mean, he died of AIDS, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he put a face on it as well. Well, Nick, yeah. let's do this. Let's toss to break. Come back. Hopefully, we'll have uh, the money man. Ah, I am so excited about this. Going to be very cool. All right, everybody. 347-215-7771 is the call-in number. And we come back. We're open to have Eddie Money, the rock and roll legend, on the line. Stay with us. 
We'll return after this word from our... Whoa, we got one? (laughs) Sponsor. Sponsor. 